so many, like Patagonia, I was really bummed I missed that trip. <laughs> that was pretty rad. Um, you know, I love I love South Africa. That was that was awesome. I'd love to get like into you know somewhere a little bit higher up in northern would be pretty rad to do. Um, you know, I haven't been to many islands, so I'd love to do some island hopping. Would be rad too. I heard Madeira is pretty rad too. It is. Yeah. Amazing ride in Madeira. Yeah. Uh, one of the places I've never got to go to is Coastal Cruise Bike Park. Like the trails look really good on that. I'd like to go there one day. Uh, and a hundred other places. Um, Argentina. Well, have you seen much about it? Yeah, it just seems like such a cool culture and like the riding scene is blown up. I haven't really done anything in South America other than that Brazil World Cup that we did. Oh yeah. So, I don't know, it's just the people are so nice and looks awesome and it's like good food. And You've got to... I would... Sweden's on there too, like big time. And Japan. God, there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, I have snap frames. Never a Santa Cruz, but brands that I rode on before, I've cracked a few. Snapped a few. No, I've cracked a couple back in the day, but yeah. never snapped one, luckily. Damn, that would suck. Yes, I've snapped a lot of them. Yeah, I've snapped a lot of them. Back uh, in the days, um, we used to have a lot of prototype frames and, uh, you know, just one-off stuff that they would they would weld and at the time uh, Yeti they weren't into gussets they hated gussets it was like there was admission to guilt so yeah. a lot of our first frames didn't have gussets and we would just fold the aluminum frames up they'd snap underneath us you know especially with the law wheel bike that came out yeah. so they had to start gusseting them but you don't really see broken frames that often now yeah I've punched a lot of people <laughs> not proud of it but I've done it have you ever punched anyone Punch? No. <laughs> not a fighter. Oh, punch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, many times. It's happened all the time. They usually punch me first. <laughs> uh, been arrested? Yes, I've been pepper sprayed. I've been arrested. A lot of it was just too much fun, and then I tried to... I had. I waited because my buddy was going to get caught, and I, usually I got caught because I'd wait for my buddies, but I was always out, but yeah, yeah. I've had, yeah. It's funny when you tell people we've been pepper sprayed, they're like, wait, what? But it was just a fun night. <laughs> yes, I've been arrested a couple of times too, in different continents. I remember one. Not proud of it either. <laughs> one of them's in Spain. One in Spain, one over, over here, West Virginia, a couple in Sheffield. <laughs> no? Well, oh, that's a good one. I don't know, I think a day in finale when we got eight shuttles was pretty much, and then you finish at the ocean and have delicious food and just good company, and that would probably be it. <laughs> the best day ever on a bike. Ooh, that's a tough one. I've had a lot of good days. It's hard to narrow it down, but I always say riding my local trails at home with a set of good mates is, is always a good time. Um, I've had a lot of good days down at Revolution Bike Park, with riding with Rat and the boys, like just having little jams and messing around. They're good days. Any new place is a good day. Oh, St. Anne, this one, this one year, I can't remember, I can't remember the year, it was like maybe 99. There was a huge storm and it, it flooded out so bad it got rid of, the, I mean, the four cross and everything was gone. Do you ever remember that? Like oh, the four cross was gone. Well, I was the last guy up on the lift and it was just gnarly thunder. There's nobody, even the lift guys, they all just kind of retreated into their, into their um, boxes. And I, I jumped on the course and it was just nothing but water underneath me. When I got into the trees, the lightning was just lighting up the trees and I was just going down. And it was seriously one of the most surreal times. I was almost like on a movie set. Like it was almost like platoon with explosions going off and just riding it down. And that was kind of, I still to this day, it's like, that's one of the craziest memories I have on a bike and just being in a flood, just going for it. Um, I mean, I've had a lot where I've like hooked my sack and, and fully cut it and have to like show it to the team. <laughs> um, I've pooped before when I crashed. Um, they're not really embarrassed. Like I always like a good crash is like, you know, it's <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I don't I never really had an embarrassing crash. Really, I, there was one time when there's like a bunch of mud. We we're at a race in Seven Springs, and there's the whole section was like super gnarly muddy, and you had to get a run into it. And I remember coming in and thinking, I gotta, I gotta pin it through this mud section. And Palmer comes running out of the trees because he crashed a, a run before me, 
and he comes running out with a handful of mud and just stuffs it into my goggle. And I end up flying over and all these people are laughing. And I mean, that was kind of, it was kind of fun, but not that embarrassing. <laughs> we were on a Santa Cruz ride up in Scotland out with like local dealers last year. And we got up on this like moorland and it was tractor ruts. Got to this big, huge puddle and some guys like stopped in front of me in the puddle and it was deep. So I was like, right, I'll just, I'll just go to the side and get out of it. I'd got a backpack on and I went to like wheelie across this rut. The front wheel dropped a little bit early and hit the wrong side of the tractor rut. So it shot back underneath me. I went over the bars, still clipped in, and rolled into this puddle on the back. Still clipped in, I was like an upside down turtle, trying to kick this bike off. I was absolutely so fucking embarrassed. Um, just because I was trying to avoid the mud, I ended up rolling around in a puddle. Actually, when I was 10, I was like a hotshot BMX girl. <laughs> and I had my, my uh, sweatshirt hanging over the and my helmet on the bar and the shirt got caught in the front wheel and I front flipped on a bike path on a school trip. <laughs> I was so bloody, I was just like covered my face and my everything, so that was pretty bad. Oh my God. Uh, for me, it was a lot of freedom. Where I grew up, I grew up around like meth and drugs and you know, violence, arguing, just just craziness. And I always like liked my bike to get away. And I, I've, um, my mom had like this beach cruiser when I was a kid and I would take it to the mountains and and go hunt snakes and things like that. And that was my time when I was by myself and I was, I was making my own decisions and I was getting lost. And you know, um, it was kind of dangerous back, you know, when you're 10, 11, just going up to the mountains by yourself doing that stuff. So for me, it was just about, just, it's all about me. Like I, I control my situation and, and I, you know, can just get the energy out that's in me. Uh, I like mountain biking because it gets me out in the fresh air. I have fun on my bike, keeps me fit get to drink beers after I've been riding. I mean, what's not to love? It's so much fun. <laughs> this is like a healthy activity where you can really just like be free and in nature. And I don't know, all the people seem generally really nice and it's like community, you know, so. It's our lifestyle, isn't it? It's a great awesome. lifestyle. Uh, not really. If I had a, you know, it's really hard. If I had a coaster brake, that might be hard. Coaster brakes are really hard to fix. Yeah. But usually, yeah, mostly everything. I mean, I'm not going to true a rim like, it might have a little bit of, yeah. you know, it could go like this, but I think everything else I'm pretty good with. I'm crap with gears. I can put a cable in, get it almost there, but if it doesn't just work straight away, I'm, I'm knackered. Maybe build a wheel from scratch, a true one, but I haven't really had to rebuild a rim or anything. Got peep. I don't really break rims that much, to be honest, luckily. Not them. Something. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 precious because I I stare at it. Like I when I get a new bike or even the same one, I'll just put them up in my front room and just stare at them. I just love looking at bikes and and uh, designs. I mean, I, it's it's just uh, it's a beautiful thing. And you get to ride it and thrash it, make it look ugly. <laughs> my bike, all my bikes are precious to me. I, I like my bike. Oh no, it's like a part of you, isn't it? Like. I don't know, treat it right, it treats you right. <laughs> cool. I think one thing that I always say to people like that when they ask that question is, don't worry about the equipment that you're on. You don't have to have the best stuff to go out and enjoy riding the bike. So, like when I first started, I just had a, I borrowed a bike off somebody else, went and rode it and, and enjoyed it. Rode, rode in my local woods, did a few jumps and, and enjoyed it and then just wanted to push my riding a little bit further and a little bit further. So that was that. That's, that's my advice. Don't worry about your equipment. <clears throat> the best tip you can say is just like to look further ahead, right? Like see what's coming, anticipate it. I used to have that written on my bars when I just got into it. <laughs> it's like, look ahead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'd be trying to hustle art, maybe. Do something like that. Um, you know, um, I don't know. I Maybe some kind of building. I like building things and... and I would say I'd probably try to, as much as I could, try to focus on art as much as possible. I'd be a plumber, of course. Something probably with design or art, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, the best bike rider all round. Ooh. I'd say something like Brian Loeb, so you can like turn his hand to anything. Um, 
I enjoy riding with Brian a lot, even though he's so competitive and just likes to drop you on the hills. It's not really fun riding with him, but it's good watching what he does. I don't know if it's just I'm biased or whatever, but maybe Kurt Voorhees. Yeah. <laughs> he's like still so old and so talented. The things he does, like, yeah. he's so talented. So maybe and he's Kurt. Really old. Yeah, and he's got terrible ankles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His ankles are so fat and destroyed, and he can still just do any kind of trick, ride backwards, ride recumbent, like do sick flatties. Like he's, yeah. I have a soft spot for Kurt. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Good dude. Besides Sweet. me? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Man, it's hard to say. There's so many good bike riders out there. Um, I mean, Bryceland, I mean, I, you, it's hard to get past like how much skill he has as far as like the new style of rider, you know? There's so many good riders out there. Um, Kyle Strait, I mean, Kyle Strait, I would, I, I'd have to say like, it would, if on a good day, Kyle is probably the best bike rider who has ever ridden a bike. I mean, if with the power, like if you put everything together, it's, yeah. he's smooth, he can do any trick. He doesn't have to practice them, you know? I mean, he can go out, he'd do slalom. If he wanted to race downhill, you know, I, I would say he's probably one of those guys that started that with yeah. the new generation. And now all the kids are so good, you can't be like, who's, who's the best rider? You know, it's kind of most to me. It's like who's the most traveled? Who's done the most? Like, yeah. you know, what do they do besides just live off? And what they're doing now, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot of times. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing now because it's hard to live off of. Oh yeah, I used to race and do that, but it doesn't matter. So, I would say the I would say probably between Kyle and I mean, there's so many good guys. It's hard to say they're all good. I'm a fan of everybody.